You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocus Radio. Man, we are here once again today. Man, we have another special guest. We're going to talk to Michael Levitt. He is the Chief Burnout Officer of the Breakfast Leadership Network. He has an amazing website, breakfastleadership.com. And man, he has a book that you can get on Amazon right now. It's Burnout Proof, How to Establish Boundaries to Avoid the Negative of Stress, Negativity of Stress, excuse me. So first and foremost, man, Michael, I just want to say thank you for taking time to schedule talk to us today, man. How you doing? I am great. Really looking forward to our conversation today. Man, so burnout, you know a lot about this topic. So before we dive into today's uh, show topic, give the audience a little bit of uh, illustration, a little bit about your background. Yeah, my background is diverse. I have done a ton of things in my life and career. Very fortunate that I've had a lot of experiences which I've been able to use. But the reason why I do the work today and in working with organizations and speaking at conferences and holding workshops on burnout prevention is I had my own burnout journey uh, back in 2009, went over a period of 369 days. So just over a year, I had a heart attack that should have killed me. And then several weeks later, I lost my job during the Great Recession. And then a few months later, my car was repossessed. And then finally, uh, about a year after the heart attack, uh, my home was foreclosed. So all of those things happened to me in about a year. And all those things happened because I was burned out. I was making mistakes at work. I wasn't taking care of myself. Uh, I wasn't getting any exercise in, and it just was a complete mess of an existence as far as how I was. And recovering from all of those things, I I decided, okay, I don't ever want to go through that again. Uh, No one should. So I did something strange, and I decided, you know what, I need to refocus on what's important in my life and and what's not. And I made some adjustments along the way and then got back to a more healthier version of me and then noticed, wow, there's a lot of people that are looking like me. You know, they're, they're, they look stressed, they look burned out. So <clears throat> excuse me, I started doing some research and realized burnout was a really big problem. And this was back in late 2014, early 2015. And I thought, okay, what am I going to do about this? Because my experience was pretty pretty devastating. I don't want anybody to ever go through any of those things, much less all of them in a short period of time. So I started writing about it and talking with people, did some speaking engagements at little shops and whatnot. And then it just started to take on a life of its own and formed a business around it. And here we are today where I get to do some amazing things, travel the world and and speak about burnout prevention. And when it comes to burnout prevention someone listening right now they're gonna have this big question how do you notice burnout is there any way you can see the early stages before you actually start experiencing it yeah there's some signs that i see time and time again and i had all these signs but unfortunately i ignored them Uh, a lot of family and friends knew that i was burned out but i was the last person to get the memo but the the signs that you see a lot are one If your sleep has not been good for a long time or you don't get good sleep and you're tossing and turning, that's definitely one thing. Another sign is if you are lacking motivation to do things you actually enjoy doing. I'm not just talking about work. I'm talking about things you like doing outside of work. If you quit going to those things, if you quit going out with your friends, if you quit going to have coffee or if you quit, you know, let's say you you know, play basketball or baseball or hockey or whatever, if you quit going to those things. And that's a warning sign that you might be at least overwhelmed and maybe fatigued, be essentially could be burned out. If you notice too that you're more irritated than you normally are. And we, we're seeing that a lot, especially as we're coming out of this pandemic. I've noticed anyway, when you go to grocery stores or different places, it seems like people are a little bit more on edge than what I remember them being before the pandemic. So that's another sign that I see. And then if, if you're forgetful, let's say if you're you just, you can't remember where 
anything is, then that sometimes is a big issue too. So those are some of the signs that I see time and time again for people that might be burning out. And when people are just trying to find that safe space, is there a way they can, I mean, maybe they can't reach you directly, but if, if there's a safe space, what's, what's some good advice for people who need to reach out for help, whether it's like, co-workers or his family or friends what's the best way to start that process yeah if you have a trusted friend or an advisor or family member yeah definitely reach out to them uh, especially if they are supportive non-judgmental but will you know will, will hold you accountable uh, because there's a lot of things in life that we do and we have those friends and family members that are supporting us no matter what but they won't hold us accountable so we're not you know being kept on tab to make sure that we're doing things right so reach out to them if if you don't have somebody like that in your life then you know there's services online you know, through your employer a lot of times they have employee assistance programs or mental health programs we're seeing a lot more companies are starting to roll those out a little bit more those are great because you can at least have an initial call with a mental health worker and they can guide you uh, through some tips and techniques to be able to to deal with it. Obviously, you know, Google is a good way too, but <clears throat> a lot of times it, it's better to talk it out. And I, and I tell this to people all the time. I have a therapist and I think everyone should have a therapist. Um, I've used them for years because they've helped me work through either current challenges or maybe something I want to work through that I've been dealing with for a long time with relationships or why did I make that decision uh, this way? You know, what was, what was the situation from that? So those are the, some tips on if you're, if you're thinking you're burning out, you know, just start talking it out because when you're stressed, you kind of feel like you're the only person in the world that's dealing with this and, and, and you're not. There's millions of people that are coping with this right now. Once again, this time, Focus Radio talking to our guest, Michael Levitt, the Chief Burnout Officer of the Breakfast Leadership Network. You can go to his website, breakfastleadership.com. And you also uh, you have a podcast that people can listen to, The Breakfast Leadership Show. Uh, they can listen to that anywhere they can hear a podcast. But when when you started the process of going to these speaking engagements and traveling and meeting new people, new faces, you touched on some of the common things you've seen. But when it comes to the other side, right, the light at the end of the tunnel, what's some of the feedback that you receive from people after they have over... Uh, after they overcame that that dark time in their life where they are were experiencing burnout, was well, some of the uh, inspiring stories you can share our audience. A lot I hear is from I can taste food again to I you know enjoy doing little things again. I, I I picked up a hobby that I haven't done in several years, and I actually enjoy it. Or I learned a new hobby. And I'm, I'm just enjoying life and uh, I'm not checking my email all day and all night. I'm not on my phone as much. Uh, I switched jobs because of what you said and I found a healthier place for me to work. And I, I feel so much better and um, making a contribution at work. Those are some, just some of the testimonials I get. I get a ton of them and how... You know my experience and what I went through, it you know, gave them some courage to to make some steps and some adjustments in their life because it's not easy to you know switch gears. It's not easy to say you know what I'm going to leave this job even though I, it's horrible for me. Um, I know that I can find something better, and but it's still that's a that's a risky situation because. Many people have been with their companies for a long time and they're afraid of going out to something new because you don't know what that job's going to be like. You don't know the environment. You don't, you feel kind of like the first day of school when you're a little kid. The first day is a little, you know, anxious for some people. So a lot of people feel that. But what I hear time and time again is once people, you know, start making some decisions on taking care of themselves a little bit better and focusing on their well-being, that's when they start seeing some transformation and 
they feel better. You know, the stress is reduced and without prolonged stress, you won't burn out. So if you can address the prolonged stress, then you'll feel better. And then things in life just become easier for you. And also in your book, uh, give that a shout real quick, uh, Burnout Proof, how to establish boundaries to avoid the negativity of stress. You, in the book, talk about uh, implementing techniques that can go further than what people are used to taking that quote unquote vacation once, once a year that we all get excited about. But what's some of the techniques that uh, people can can put in their life so that way they are actively being involved in the restoring process. Uh, for me, one of the biggest game changers was just to make sure that I knew what things and experiences in life I enjoy. And I make sure that I schedule those in my life, not just, okay, we're going on vacation in a couple of weeks. That's, that's great. But throughout your year, you have things that you can do that don't require going on vacation. They can be, you know, going hiking, maybe going golfing, or you like driving your car on the weekends, going out to the country or going fishing or reading or watching your favorite movies or going to the movies. These, these little things in life that we do, these experiences, which many of them, of course, were put on hold during the pandemic, but now, you know, depending on where you live in the world, you, you can probably pretty much do everything we were doing before. It's, it's important for you to do those things and, and, and filter those in. Even if you're working a ton of hours, working long days, maybe you're a business owner and you just put in time, you, you need to do those things and, and, and physically do them. You know, and go to it and, and leave your phone in your pocket or in your purse or wherever you keep your phone and, and just experience the moment. I, I think too many people, and we've seen it with smartphone usage, we spend so much time on these devices, which are amazing devices, but we miss life. We, we miss experiences. And, you know, that's another technique is, you know, kind of restrict your your screen time as much as you can. You know, case in point, yesterday I did a three hour virtual workshop. And during each break, I told people, okay, we're going to take a 10 minute break. If you can go outside, don't have your phone with you. Look at the top of the trees or scare, stare at the skyline. Or if you can't see the top of the trees, just look out at nature and just watch nature for a couple minutes. And just to kind of refocus your eyes on something beside a screen and with technology and working from home and all this other stuff, uh, it, it's been really problematic and it causes you some stress. So, you know, those are just a couple techniques that you can do. But I, I think if there's a key takeaway is make sure you're doing things in life you enjoy doing and do whatever you can to get the best type of sleep you can get, because that helps heal your body from all the things that we do to it. And going back a little bit, to your point earlier in this conversation where you talked about 2009, how you had your own personal story of ex experiencing burnout. And man, over that period of time, so many things were happening back to back to back. Mm -hmm. And with you, how did you personally find a way, I guess you can say, hold on. So that way you, you didn't end up giving up and saying, you know what? Maybe this is not what I'm supposed to be doing as far as like hitting your next goal or, you know, looking forward to tomorrow. How did you keep your mind from going underwater? Uh, for me, it was just picking myself up and focusing on, okay, what can I do today? Now, when you lose your job, you have a full-time job of finding a new job. And that's what I did. And I, did, I treated it that way. During the work week, I would you know, spend considerable amount of time during the day, not at night, but just during the day when I would normally work uh, for looking for jobs or going on interviews or whatever the case may be. And then at night and on the weekends, I didn't. I wasn't looking for jobs at night. I wasn't doing it on the weekend. I was spending time with my family and you know, still, you know, basically healing up from the, the, heart, the heart attack for, that I had. And that was a big help. And then once I found the job and found a new position, you know, when you when you lose the car and then you lose the home afterwards, at that particular point, it was okay. 
you know, I have another vehicle that's paid off, so we don't have to worry about that. And losing the home is as huge as that was. You know, thankfully, we had found a place to rent because uh, we were getting ready to sell our home and the bank decided to sell it for us instead. But uh, each time one of those things happened, I, I, I kept reminding myself, okay, you survived a heart attack that really should have killed you. Okay, so that's big. Now you you've overcome that. You know I've lost you know a job prior to that in my life, so I knew what that felt like. And I went, okay, I'll I'll find another job. The car and the home thing were obviously brand new, uh, frustrating for sure. But at the end of the day, it was a situation where I realized, okay, still have a vehicle, have a place to live, so my basics are covered. I've got food, clothing, shelter, and I'm getting healthier. So I, I was focusing just on that, on, on what you do have. Because when things are happening to you and you're having a really tough go, you're stressed, you're burned out and all that stuff, you can go down a very negative, dark, dark place. And the key thing is to focus on what you do have. Because even if you've just got the basics, you, know, you, you have food, you have clothing, you have shelter. Um, it may not be the greatest food, it may not be the greatest clothes you have, you may not have the best place to live, but it's still a place to live. And I, that's what I did. I just focused on, okay, what do I have now? Okay, what do I need to do to get me to the next stage where I want to be? And just and work on that. And knowing that it wasn't going to be an overnight thing, but I just did that work and that helped me heal. Uh, both from a mental standpoint, but a physical as well. Once again, listen to I'm Focus Radio talking to, I guess, Michael Leppitt and continue the conversation of burnout prevention when you've been able to, once again, speak at different events and talk to different people, different backgrounds of life. What's the common thing that you see as far as just people who are hungry to be successful, right? But at the same time, like you, your point earlier, they're dealing with unexpected stress. What's the things you see that are inspiring for other people to obtain as far as if they can do it, I can do it too, but the common core ingredients to be able to stay consistent, if, if that makes sense, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I see a lot of type A personalities that are really successful are definitely more vulnerable to stress and burnout than people that aren't necessarily as driven. Uh, you see a lot of business owners you know, that started their business and they've had some success and the business is growing and they're just wiped out because they've poured so much time and effort into it. Uh, they didn't take breaks along the way. And the ones that have been successful that still live a healthier lifestyle for them, you know, and by healthier, I mean, you know, not working all day and all night and eating the foods that are right for them, you know, because everybody has different needs as far as what kind of food you eat. So uh, I always tell people, you know, find the foods that are right for you, not, you know, what the cookbook says or, you know, what somebody says online or something. It's like figure out what foods are good for you and, and eat those because those will give you natural energy and all of that. But I, I think the ones that are successful, that are inspiring, um, they understand when they misstep, but they don't beat themselves up over it. And I think as a society, all of us do a good job, and I'm being sarcastic here, of beating ourselves up. And we need to stop that. You know, we are, you know, you have to do whatever you can to love yourself. And if you don't love yourself, figure out why and, and make whatever necessary adjustments you want so you can. Because we, who do you spend more time with than you? Nobody. You know, so taking care of yourself both mentally and physically and, and doing things in life that you enjoy doing and being creative you know, is, is a great way to be successful. Success will come. Uh, and whatever your definition of success is, it will come. But it, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but I'd much rather something take me 10 years to build it. And at the end of it, I'm energized and able to enjoy all of that effort 
then try to cram it into a three-year span and be completely wiped out or just burn out and lose everything because I was just pushing too hard and, and not taking care of myself in the meantime. So that's those are just a couple things that come to mind. And what I'm hearing from this too is this is real lifestyle. The, the sooner you can make this a daily routine versus almost like the running joke, people don't go to church until... Easter or Christmas, <laughs> it's like, well, if you don't wait until you actually need this prevention, then you can start today to make it a habit. Yeah, it's definitely a habit to take care of yourself. As silly as that sounds, I often joke that I'm thankful that we breathe pretty much on autopilot because some of us <laughs> are so stressed out, we would forget to breathe. And then you'd, you'd see everybody because they'd be all laid out on the sidewalk and <laughs> the roads and all of that because we for, oh, I forgot to breathe today. Oops. No, it's, it's, I, it's, it's a, well, like I say, wash, rinse and repeat. It, it's something, it's an everyday thing. It's not something, okay, I, I've established the boundaries in my life and this is my habits. And okay, now I, I just go on autopilot again. It's like, no, it's, it's something you, you have to make it a part of your life and you got to figure out what works for you. I could easily say, okay, here's the checklist. Here's what you need to do every morning. Here's this. If you're not a morning person, that's, that, that's not a good idea. You, know, you might be an afternoon and evening type of person as far as their energy levels and things that you do in life. So you just, you find what works for you. And it, it takes some time. It takes a little bit of effort to experiment and, and see what works for you. But once you find it and you, and you start practicing it, it will become habits. So you don't necessarily have to think about it, but from time to time, you have to kind of remind yourself, it's like, yeah, I need to go do this, or I need to go for that morning walk like I do you know, during the week. And there are some mornings where I don't feel like doing it, but I do. And there are other mornings, like this morning, for example, I was energized and enjoyed every second of it. It's just, you know, we, we have our days where things are good and things are you know, maybe not so good. But as long as you keep doing it, you'll be better for it. Yeah. Like you said, that that's that's good points right there. Once again, listen to our Focus Radio, talking to our guest, Michael Levitt. And man, really great points on this show. Uh, before we wrap this up, you have uh, opportunity for people to take a online course uh, titled Burnout Proof for Your Life. And tell us a little bit about that and how that can help get the ball rolling. Just like my book, it's it's a pretty quick course. And the reason being is when people are stressed and burn out, asking them to dedicate hours upon hours of their life to read something or sit through an online course, they're not going to do it because they're just they're too fatigued and tired. So it's designed to be quick. It, it gives you some insights as to okay, what is burnout? You know, what are the signs? Why do we burn out? Uh, that's that's really important is figuring out why we burn out and what you can do to kind of get out of it. And you know, either the book, uh, which uh, thank you for the shout out on that, you know, is available on Amazon or uh, the online courses at the Breakfast Leadership website towards the top. You can see courses, I think, is with the link on it. Uh, it'll take you right there. And it's priced affordable because I want people to be able to do it. I don't want people burning out because... When people burn out, that means the products and services that they help build um, suffer for that. And as consumers, uh, we suffer from it. So as a society, we don't want anybody burning out. We want people to be healthy because the products and services that we buy are going to be better because people are feeling better. They're happier. They're more energetic and, and they're fully present to do the things that they want to do. So, uh, yeah, that's the, the whole design of the of the course uh, um, plans in the new year for some additional coursework, uh, just trying to you know wrap that in between speaking schedule and everything else that I get to do because it's not good for the burnout guy to burn out. So I have to manage my time accordingly as best I can, but uh, I appreciate that. Once again, listen to I am refocus radio talking to our guest for today, Michael Levitt, the chief Burnout Officer of the Breakfast Leadership Network. You can go to his website, breakfastleadership.com. You also get his book that we mentioned earlier, 
And that is burnout proof, how to establish boundaries to avoid the negativity of stress. And last but not least, he also has a podcast himself. It is called Breakfast Leadership Network Show. Uh, I want to say once again to you, Michael, thanks for your time and taking uh, a moment out of your schedule to talk to our folks on radio. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much.